Hello, and welcome to Diagnosing Rack Issues. My name is Steve Hamilton, and I'll be your instructor for this module. In this lesson, we will learn on how to identify the CRS log files. And this is a little different in Oracle 12C as it has been in prior versions of Oracle. So we'll learn about the new locations. We will understand the overall directory structure, such as the ADR, which has been slightly changed in Oracle 12C as well. And then at the very end, we will review the Rack Dictionary Views. And this has changed a little bit as well. Please keep in mind, we are talking about an Oracle 12C environment, which will support the multi-tenant architecture, which means that you have container as well as pluggable databases. So the real issue here is within Rack, you really need to know where to go to find these log files and trace files. And that has changed in version 12C. In prior versions of Rack, like in 10, 11, and 11GR2, we knew specifically where to look. Now, in Oracle 12, they've changed the location. A couple of things to keep in mind is number one, it is very important that each individual node has its own or is associated to a network time protocol. These nodes cannot be off even a few milliseconds or a rack eviction may occur. So a couple of things. We need to know to, where to look to find the trace files and log files, as well as using the network time protocol. Now, it's not a requirement to use the network time protocol. It is just highly recommended. And then ultimately, we are going to take a look at the GV dollar views. The point here is that we want to minimize node eviction. A node eviction basically means that the voting disk was not able to find a specific rack component on that specific server. And when it couldn't find it, it performed an eviction. An eviction is not a node deletion. It just means I'm looking for you and you're not there. So I'm going to evict you. Once you fix the problem, it can be brought back into the rack environment. So keep in mind that the CRS log files are now located under the ADR, which is the Automatic Diagnostic Repository, which is typically under the Oracle base. As a matter of fact, if the diagnostic desk is not set, it will default to the Oracle base. In prior versions of Oracle, it was located under the grid infrastructure home slash logs directory. Now in Oracle 12C, we've moved everything under the diagnostic desk or the ADR. What I've done here is I've navigated to the Oracle base directory slash diag. So out here we see the user one app Oracle, which is the Oracle base slash diag. Underneath this directory, these are all of the components that are installed on this server. We have ASM, cluster ready services, listener, databases. So the CRS components are going to be located under the CRS directory or the ASM directory. Keep in mind, each individual node will have their own set of log files. So now I've navigated to the CRS directory. And under the CRS directory, I will have a specific directory associated to that specific node. So I navigated to CRS, and then under CRS, I went to the Rack 2 directory. So this is the cluster ready services for node 2. You'd have a corresponding one for node 1. Underneath here, I have a trace directory and I have alert.log directory. Just like the Oracle database, the cluster ready services has its own alert.log as well. And this works very similar to a database. So when the cluster starts up, it's going to write information to the alert.log file. You will also have specific directories for things like CSS, CRS, each individual rack component. So here we've navigated to the trace directory. Now keep in mind, just like a traditional database, you have a directory called trace, which is the, contains the ASCII text file for the alert.log, and then you have a directory called alert. Under alert, it's the log.xml. 
So under alert, we have a log.xml, which makes it a little bit easier to search through. But under trace, it's the ASCII text file. So if you want to look at startup and shutdown parameters or errors or events, really more events, you would review the alert.log file on a specific node for cluster ready services. If we want to look at other rack issues, we could go to the grid infrastructure home slash log node name and then look at those specific directories. However, in an Oracle 12C environment, some of these files have been deprecated. This was very true in 11GR2, but under 12C, pretty much everything is going to be located under the ADR. There may be some log files that will be located under the grid infrastructure home, but the first stop would be the ADR. Every rack environment is controlled basically by two types of rack disks. We have one is called the voting disk, and the other one is called the OCR disk. The OCR stands for Oracle Cluster Registry, and there is one common registry file across all nodes within the rack. Correspondingly, we have an OLR, which is Oracle Local Registry, and this is the same thing as the OCR, except for it fi its file resides specifically on each individual node. So, if I have a two-node rack, I effectively have three registries. I have the OCR, which is the Oracle Cluster Registry, residing on a disk group, and then I have an OLR on node one and an OLR on node two. If I wanted to determine the location and status of that OLR, I'd have to navigate to the ASM environment on that specific node. I have to do this under the root command. I cannot do this under the traditional grid account or Oracle command. Then I would issue the command OCR check dash local. It's the OCR check dash local that has to be performed as the root account. If you just issue the OCR check command, that can be performed as the grid account or the Oracle account. This command just tells me the name and location of the local OLR file for that specific node. Again, two things have to occur. In order for OCR check local to work, your environment has to be pointed to ASM and it has to be ran as the root account. Now, if I just want to see the common OCR file, again, my environment must be set to ASM, but I can issue this command as the Oracle account, the grid account, or the root account, whereas the other one has to be issued as the root account. So this is just giving me the default location of the OCR file. So the way the database works, or the way that the rack works, is we have the Oracle cluster registry, which identifies all components within the rack. Then we have what's called the voting disk. What the voting disk does is it goes out and it reads the contents of the OCR to make a determination, is that component available? So it kind of looks for a heartbeat of that component within the rack environment. If it can find the heartbeat, that node stays within the rack. If it cannot find the heartbeat, that node is evicted. So depending upon the rack environment, we will have a log file for each individual component for rack. So we will have a log file for things like the listener, the instance, your service, as well as things like your cluster ready services, your cluster synchronization services, your ONS, and your event monitors. All of these trace files and log files are now located under the automatic diagnostic repository in an Oracle 12C environment. Please keep in mind, if the diagnostic desk parameter is not set, it will default to the Oracle base. Most of the issues that you may run into in a rack environment will, do with, will deal with either a slow network or network time protocols, meaning that node one and node two are not on the same time. If you wish to collect information regarding your overall rack environment from your grid infrastructure home, and this can be performed as the Oracle account or the grid account, under the bin directory, you would issue the diag collection.pl command with the dash collect flag. Okay, this has to be done as the root account. 
What this will do is it'll grab a series of performance related information on how the rack was operating. So under the grid infrastructure home slash bin, you will run the dyad collection.pl with a dash collect flag, run as root, it will create a series of log files, kind of sum them up, and then you can review them. This would be similar to the AWR report for cluster ready services. We can also use the rack dynamic performance views to, de to determine rack performance information. You can look at system events, weight events, SGAs, active he session history. These are going to be the same thing as your V$ views, with the exception of they will have a specific column for instance ID. The GV$ views we're going to give you information on what's currently going on within your rack environment. The Dyag Collection tool looks at all of the log files and trace files. The big difference with the GV$ tables is the GV$ tables contains this extra column called instance ID and that will give you instance specific information which can also enable you to write aggregate functions with group by clauses to group things together by specific instance ID. So if you want to trace down a specific action for a specific user on a specific server, you can do that with the GV$ views. Also, you can look at the data dictionary views such as DBA underscore all underscore. Keep in mind in Oracle 12c, we have a new set of data dictionary families and that is the CDB underscore, which stands for Container Database. Thank you for viewing.